Hey everyone, I'm Delightful Dev, and last week I made a game for the Brackies Game Jam 2024.1. If you want to play my entry, there's a link in the pinned comment down below. For those of you that aren't sure what a game jam is, it's when a group of game developers with a little too much free time get together and make games. There's a time limit and a theme that we all have to use, but otherwise, everyone's free to make whatever they want. This jam is pretty important, because the host of it is Brackies himself. His channel single-handedly taught the newest generation of Unity devs. Me included. This will be the fourth time I participate in a jam hosted by him. If you're interested in my previous entries, I'll link the devlogs about them in the description. The theme this time was, what's behind the door? Usually for game jams, I lock myself in a dark room and wait for an idea to materialize out of nowhere. But this time, I decided to stream my brainstorm session. Oh, you missed the stream? Why not join my Discord and get notified every time I post a new game, release a new video, or go live? You can also playtest my games early and influence development. Anyway, if you're interested in my design process, I'll leave the link to the VOD in the description. The stream was a ton of fun, and the final idea I went with was actually based off a of viewer submission. Speaking of ideas, here's all the ideas we came up with during the stream. The first one was a game where you're a hotel manager or valet, and cars pull up to the hotel. Your job is to identify the creature driving the car based on physical traits. Once you know what type of creature it is, you can get it the right room for them to spend the night. This was an interesting idea, but I wasn't really feeling it like I usually do, so we kept brainstorming. We thought of a game based off the Monty Hall problem, where you play as a goat and host a game show. We couldn't come up with any gameplay features though, but I did find a submission that did this quite nicely. Check it out in the description. There was a door platformer, where you play as a key that has to navigate around the grooves of a door to get to a keyhole. This one didn't really have anything behind a door, so we scrapped it. We also came up with an upgrade system, where you had to pick one of three doors to get a random upgrade. This one kind of felt like a gimmick though. Up next was one of my favorite ideas, Doors vs Zombies. It's just Plants vs Zombies, but using doors instead. Look, I really want to make a game about Plants vs Zombies, but I guess now's not the time. The final idea, and the one I ultimately picked, was called Night Shift. This game is actually mechanically identical to the valet idea, where you need to identify a creature that's behind a door and get them something specific based off what they look like. I went with this one instead of the valet idea, though, because it's a horror game. And I'd been wanting to make a horror game ever since I missed last year's Scream Jam. I really wanted this to be a 3D game, but I'd never made one before. Because of my limited knowledge and time, I used a couple free assets from the Unity Store. Notably, a character controller and some low-poly furniture assets. I wanted this game to have a retro feel similar to something like Inscription, so I added a pixel filter over the whole thing. By the end of day one, I had something that looked like this. This was the proof of concept I needed to confirm that I was headed in the right direction. If this hadn't looked good, I would have just made something in 2D. Additionally, during the first day, I fleshed out all the systems and documented everything I needed to do before the end of the week. I wrote this out in a way that allowed me to make the game in chunks. For example, Night Shift takes place over five in-game nights. Each night, a new problem would appear, adding a layer to the gameplay. This allows me to build the game on a per-night basis. It also allows players to master each gameplay change until they reach the fifth night and have to use all their knowledge at once to beat the game. Now that I knew I could make a 3D game, and I had all the ideas written out, I needed to make some game assets. I looked up how to model low-poly assets and got to work. Real quick, has anyone noticed that if I say subscribe, the subscribe button lights up in YouTube? Kinda makes you wanna click it, right? Okay, back to the video. Now that I have all the models, I think it's a good time to explain the full game loop. So, each night you're faced with finding five specific items for five monsters, which I'm calling clients. Clients have three traits that you need to identify within a certain time frame. These traits are additional appendages, eye count, and teeth count. Based on those factors, they can request one of 36 possible item combinations. It sounds complicated, but it's actually quite simple. See this client? He's got six eyes, five teeth, and a tail. Using the clipboards, we can tell that the item he wants is owns, opaque, and normal. Easy peasy. After we know the item, we just have to look around the room and find it. I got a few people to test these mechanics, and once they got the hang of it, they were able to quickly figure out and find the item. That's where each new knight's mechanic comes in. Knight 2, for example, introduces noisy clients. They'll screech every few seconds. If they screech three times, you instantly lose. The only way to stop them is to feed them. Wait a minute, a Five Night based horror game with pizza in it? Uh, anyway, I did have things planned for nights 3 through 5, but unfortunately I ran out of time. Don't worry though, because I'm going to finish Night Shift and release it as a full game on Steam. I actually just made a Steam page where you can go wishlist it. Speaking of Steam, have you tried my broken build roguelike game Searching for Rest? Check it out if you haven't seen it. Anyway, now that the game loop is clear, I need to find out how to implement it. Since I know that all five correct items need to be present in the room at the start of each night, I need to have all the information figured out right when each level loads. Additionally, since the items are created based off the client's features, I need to generate the client's features first. So, what I ended up doing was generating five codes when a new level loads. 
These codes correspond to client features, which then corresponds to item properties. For example, if the code is 000, the client wants a weapon that's transparent and normal. If it's 221, the client wants an artifact that's opaque and cursed. With these codes, I can create each client's features and give each correct item its properties. After I have all that, I can input random codes to create red herring items. At this point, I have 5 random clients spawning with their correct items along with 15 red herring items. What I need now are satisfying lose and win scenarios, something like this. I spent all of day 5 on the lose condition because I wanted it to look as good as possible. At the start of day 6, I had night 1 completely done from top to bottom. At this point, I wanted to start work on night 2, but there were two big things that I still had to do before the deadline. I had to make a tutorial, and I needed to add sounds and music. Fortunately, I had been conspiring with my go-to composer, Francisco. He had been working on all the music and jump scare sounds throughout the week. After making a couple more sound effects, I had all the sound taken care of. So I got to work on the tutorial. Since day one, I knew that I wanted to have someone giving you instructions, like a sort of supervisor helping a new hire. With that in mind, I knew I had to make a flexible dialogue system that could handle specific scenarios. For example, towards the start of the game, the voice prompts you to move your character with WASD. Before this line of dialogue, your movement inputs are actually disabled. The dialogue re-enables it. This allows me to slowly introduce mechanics while you're playing. Once the dialogue and tutorial was complete, I started work on night two. I also published a test build on itch.io for my Discord members to play. Using their feedback, I was able to add a pixelation slider, a mouse sensitivity slider, and difficulty settings. With the deadline getting closer, I was running out of time for extra features, so I hurried up and began work on the gameplay mechanic for night two. This night's mechanic is noisy clients. To make this work, I quickly modeled a fridge in Blender along with a slice of pizza, and coded the new mechanic. Although the implementation of night two's mechanic was quick, I still only had an hour left to submit, so I didn't have enough time to add any more features. Though, I did go ahead and add a small bit of code that lowers your time to search each night to create a makeshift increase in difficulty if you do want to play more nights. After submitting and making the game page look nice, I just had to wait for people to play my game. I'm making this 5 days since the voting period began, and I've gotten some great feedback so far, making me quite excited to continue development. But before that, I have another project I need to finish. Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, consider liking it and sharing it. And don't forget to join the Discord if you want to get inside information on things I'm working on.